Uh, Narita and Haneda Airport start full-scale facial recognition. This was at the start of the week. These are, I believe, NEC machines. This is part of the uh, huge fuss I think that NEC has been having with the Japanese government that have been contracting all these, I told about these uh, IT development horror stories that have been going on. Of course, facial recognition I find fascinating because I work in, it has to do with my work anyway, and it comes up. And, you know, I have to consider, um, you know, what are the potential, in Japan it isn't really regulated at all. You know, in America, it's like in Europe, there are like cities and states that are saying, we're banning all facial recognition. And that's it, like blanket bans on it everywhere and people saying, you know, I don't want facial recognition anywhere near me and there are blanket, you know, facial recognition free zones and so on. Nothing like that at all in Japan. No, no sort of uh, knee-jerk reactions like that. And of course, they're rolling it out at the airports. Um, I am biased, and I'll say that in advance, I'm biased in favor of the technology. Um, not from the perspective that I think we should be living like in a dystopian sort of uh, China where everything you do is uh, tracked and tagged or anything like that. But I do think, for example, at airports which have facial recognition based uh, automated check-in systems, from my experiences of traveling to America, if I was given the choice between a facial, going through a facial recognition system uh, that was based off my, my passport photo or even a better photo that was taken of me, uh, that let me just stand in front of a machine and, uh, you know, even maybe answer some questions and then go through with the same questions I'd do normally. Um, I would pick the machine over the TSA worker like all, all day long, right? Like, you know, um, that would be for my own personal convenience. And sure, I mean, they want to do the security check. Another problem I have with the idea of people being against facial recognition is that all the facial, facial recognition does is it automates... Um, it automates what people do. I'm thinking back to when the uh, when, when Kim Yong Sam, the son of Kim Il Jong, uh, Kim Jong Il, uh, got into Japan to go to um, to go to Disneyland, and he came in on a Dep Dominican Republic or was it Dominican passport? And uh, the person at customs recognized, wait, you are the son of Kim Jong-il, which is kind of, to me, amazing that you would actually recognize someone as being a child of the North Korean dictator. Um, but, you know, that was human, that was facial recognition done by a human. And, you know, yes, there are issues with the technology, including, you know, different biases, including it being misconfigured lots of times and false positives and people afraid of being arrested based on uh, false recognition or just being tracked, you know, and be living in a police state. I get all of that. But at the same time, I think there are legitimate use cases for it. I mean, again, I'm biased in favor of it. Um, I, I don't think it should be free of rules and regulation. There should be lots of rules of how it's used. There's particularly rules to make sure that you don't turn down the recognition algorithms on it, that it be there should be rules about, you know, to ensure the accuracy and utility and that it shouldn't just be used on its own as a source. You know, you shouldn't be able to arrest people purely off it. But I'll tell you what, there are some good cases for it too. There are cases, like I just said, for getting through an airport queue for my own convenience. There's other cases as well where they put these things in airports and they kept they they actually helped to recover um, kidnapped kids um, and people being human trafficked basically human slavery right sex sex trafficking and sex slavery you know you just have to have a captured image and even of a child you can actually project into the future you can actually detect when maybe adults wouldn't check and flag people and recover people and this is something that's actually happened so again the idea that you would ban facial recognition when it might be able to recover kidnapped kids, you know, uh, when humans might not be able to do it. Like I say, so long as it's uh, known and opt well, I think actually it's reasonable at things like borders to actually have it. You, you want to capture wanted criminals and, um, you know, um, you want to flag people who are on terror watch lists. You don't know that they would have always caught Kim Jong, you know, Il's child traveling into Japan going to Disneyland on a Dominican passport. And certainly the idea of being able to capture uh, trafficked children and so on, there are legitimate cases for it. Sure, there are cases of uh, abuse or where the technology is not good enough or it's being used inappropriately. But personally, I think this is good. And I look, you know, and, and I also remember how when um, the West, as opposed to Russia, when, when the West went invading uh, Afghanistan, people sort of would make fun in a way of the... Uh, about the superstition that, uh, you know, Pashtuns apparently have of not wanting their, believing that, you know, if their photo was taken, it would capture their soul and how this was sort of something that was just generally mocked for a time in social media. But yet, I don't know, I feel like in a way, well, one, maybe the Pashtuns had it right, not letting anyone take their photos. I mean, that's probably how <laughs> so many managed to avoid uh, detention for a long time. But it's funny how now, like with the anti-masking thing, uh, people being afraid of, uh, you know, other people wearing masks and so on, as well as, of course, the facial recognition thing. You know, perhaps there is something psychologically 
you know, basically, you know, maybe people are not so different to the Taliban deep down. I don't know. Um, but uh, from my perspective, used in the right way, and this is the right way, I would take the facial recognition cue all the time. Now, of course, I'm a middle-aged, you know, white person, so you could argue I have the least to fear from a system like this. But still, you know, um, I, I think the idea of just blanket, universally, blindly demonizing a technology that's just basically automating something that people do is just dumb, you know. Um, sure, regulate it. Think about when it is and isn't useful and what the guidelines for it are. But just saying, you know, no facial recognition just doesn't make, you know, any rational sense to, you know, it's Luddite to me. So, you know, good system. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. How did you already get through pretty fast? But narrative to the queues can take a wee while. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing the sort of technology because I hate spending time in airports. And I just want to get through them. That's that's just me. Aaron, it seems like it could make an expo, uh, airport experience smoother. No one wants to get that TSA agent who's having a bad day. Am I right? Indeed not. Um, you know, I, I, in America, I mean, I, <laughs> I remember when I went to America, they, actually, they really make you take off your shoes. For Americans, I realize I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. But for me, uh, when they told me to take off my shoes, I was like, oh, I are you actually serious? <laughs> you know, I thought it was a joke. I'm like, oh, where, where are the, where's the prank videos? Um, yeah, you know, like that just sucks. And apparently, you know, uh, lately I've gotten into a bit of a binge of watching Travel Trek, I think it's called, a guy who just re uh, reviews business and first class uh, flying. And he points out that in America, apart from the fact that what's called first class in America is business class and like the rest of the world, it's not very good. Um, you know, you don't get any avoidance of the security checks or anything there. So, yeah.